Mr. Bishop. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Director Ray, on June 8, ProPublica published an article stating that it, quote, has obtained a vast trove of IRS data on the tax returns of thousands of the nation's wealthiest people covering more than 15 years, close quote. And the article went on to disclose detailed return information spanning five years of several ultra-wealthy uh, Democrats who seem to have much, more, much less enthusiasm for taxes in private than they advocate for publicly. But um, Title 26, Section 7213 makes it a federal felony punishable, punishable by fine and up to five years in prison willfully to disclose return information. Uh, that statement and the balance of the article reflect that the commission of tens of thousands of counts of crimes, probably by some IRS employee or some other authorized disclosee of the data or some hacker. Uh, ProPublica reporters and editors also apparently have committed criminal violations under Section 7213A3 by publishing this data. They write that they intended to commit, uh, commit more of that. Uh, in fact, they wrote that they thought about the privacy implications and concluded that they're in effectively above the law. Um, has the FBI made any arrests in connection with that matter? I, I can't comment on any specific, the existence or conduct of any specific investigation, but uh, to the extent that I can speak in this kind of setting, I'm not aware of any arrests specifically related to the news coverage that you just described. Has the FBI uh, executed any search warrants or raided any offices or given any tips to CNN about such thing in connection with this matter? Uh, I can't, there's no such activity that I can describe at this time. Um, the FBI has arrested hundreds of people, as you've described in your testimony, for trespassing, some of them, uh, within days of their offense and put them in solitary confinement, in some cases for 90 days detention without bail. Why is this particular brazen massive crime um, deprioritized. You're talking about specifically the leak of, of uh, taxpayer information? Tens of thousands of taxpayers. Well, I'm, I don't think we, I'm not suggesting any lack of prioritization. Uh, there is responsibility for um, activity of IRS employees that in, also involves the IRS Inspector General. Uh, and so there may be a difference in areas of responsibility as compared if you're comparing it to January 6th, where uh, when it comes to acts of domestic terrorism, that's squarely something that we're expected to prioritize. And I think as the committee would want, counterterrorism is the FBI's number one priority. Uh, Director Ray, have, have there been any arrests in connection with the New York Times publication last September of the details of Donald Trump's tax information? Uh, I'm not aware of any. Did any uh, criminal charges ever get brought against Lois Lerner? I, I don't know the answer to that I'm sitting here right now. Shifting topics a little, Director Ray, uh, but maybe thematically connected and touched on by Mr. Buck. The FBI has frequently dismissed charges against violent rioters over past months in Portland. Uh, you made reference to that matter some. Um, reportedly, over half of the charges brought have been dismissed. I think the number is about 87, and about half of those are gone. Uh, on May 28th, the journalist Andy No released a statement and evidence that he was assaulted and beaten uh, while covering the latest violent riot by Antifa at that time. He wrote about being pursued as he fled through the city streets and having to beg refuge in a hotel and fleeing into the upper floors to evade being captured and killed by rioters calling for his death. Mr. No has been repeatedly targeted physically attacked because of his reporting on Antifa violence in Portland and Seattle. Uh, you mentioned earlier Asian Americans being specifically targeted. That includes Mr. No. Members of this committee have written you specifically before I joined this committee this session about prior assaults on Mr. No. Uh, we did it again early this week. There's been no response. In 1961, the Attorney General sent 600 U.S. Marshals to Alabama to protect freedom riders from mobs of violent people who are attacking them. Uh, why is the FBI not living up to its traditions in the enforcement of civil rights and protection of journalists like Mr. Ness? So uh, first thing I would say is when you're describing the prosecutions in Portland, to be clear, the FBI is not dismissing any cases. 
we don't the decisions to prosecute or dismiss prosecutions are made by the prosecutors not by the FBI and so any frustration you might have in that regard um, shouldn't be directed our way um, the second uh, we have prioritized um, investigations of what I would call anarchist violent extremism, uh, in which includes any number of individuals who, who self-identify, say, with Antifa. And in fact, we've had a significant number, significant increase in our number of anarchist violent extremist investigations during my tenure. In fact, we had more anarchist violent extremist arrests last year in 2020 than the prior three years combined. Um, so we are actively pursuing those investigations where we can. Um, it's, a, it's a threat that we take very seriously. Uh, we saw, for example, the first, um, in recent memory, the first lethal anarchist violent extremist attack uh, last year. It was directed by an Antifa identifier who attacked a a supporter of the other side, um, and he ultimately, that defendant yeah. ultimately died in a shootout with the, the marshals, as you may know. The gentleman It's something we take very seriously. The gentleman's time has expired. Christopher Ray was uh, fr flat out lying right there, and the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think, I'm you know, a huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there. And uh, I think he showed it, especially in this, his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is. Because everything that he said, especially about extremist violence, was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is pushed to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, I, I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases, and this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category, and they are treating them uh, like unlike I've ever seen in a case, uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C. There is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. He made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically, as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. 
In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media. When you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my, my former office, you know, the Department of Justice, I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who... Um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in, and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other Capitol she's ever been in is a state Capitol that's open 24-7. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between, you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they want to prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is. It's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.